into this house gathered in his name to worship him we have come into this house gathered in his name to Trade on him and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget. Happy Sabbath, everyone, and we are back to another Friday evening worship here on ASI Media Tobago chapter. Last week, you heard part one, and this week, we will be bringing to you part two of Karen Roberts' story. Again, I reiterate, these are issues that, as a church, we tend not to speak about, but these are real issues that either our members or persons who are willing to come into the faith need to hear about. Because even for persons who are outside of the faith, that's their reality. And we have to be loving, we have to be supportive. We have to remind persons that there is Christ in all of us. So before we go any further, we are going to pray and then we will have an item of special music Right after that item of special music, we will continue with this amazing testimony. Heavenly Father, 
we thank you for life. We thank you for being with us throughout this week, for the trials, the difficult moments that we have experienced. But Lord, we know that you are real in our lives. When there is so much counterfeit around us, you are real. Help us to remain connected to you. And may this worship experience touch someone and remind them or even let them know that you are God, you are real, and you love them. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning. Some dark and cold, there is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. So carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless. Confused and torn, hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. See how we strive to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle. We are back. And last week, you would have heard part one of Karen Roberts' story. And I know you're interested, and you may ask yourself, where are they going with this? <laughs> but we have real experiences that at times we don't talk about, or we think, 
we should be talking about that. However, these are experiences either our family members, if not ourselves, but our family members, friends might be a part of. And we have to lend support and show that person love. Be Christ to that person. So we are back here with Karen. And Karen will continue telling us or sharing <laughs> with us her experience. When we stopped off last week, you know, she was giving us that journey, how it all started and how her support system would have been that vital part that helped her to go forward and how God used her sons, her children to remind her, hey, I'm not in this alone. So we will continue this week with regards to her spiritual journey and how God led her through her experience and where she is today because of the grace, love, and mercy of Jesus Christ. So, Karen, we are back. Yeah. And we are going to talk about your spiritual journey. Even amidst this difficult journey, last week you would have shared with us your children. God using your children because, as you said, I don't know how I would have told them, how they would yeah. understand, but God used them and so that you could find that peace and that they could be your support. But it moved from, you know, your children and to other experiences that are working within you that, hey, God is with me. <laughs> Tell us Always. a bit about that. Well, moving on from there, before I go into that part, um, mm -hmm. I use myself, as I said, to help my people. Right. To mm -hmm. give them a mm -hmm. face. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. So I started Especially to as Caribbean persons, we right. love to see a face. So that we can identify, yes. Mm -hmm. I um, got invited to schools right. to speak with the children in the schools school. because mm -hmm. the kids are having sex at a very young in the age. school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the auditorium behind the curtain. Anywhere, anywhere where it can happen. And the question that they asked them, like, Lord, Father. So I started to encourage parents mm -hmm. to have dialogues with your kids, children. talk with your children, have open conversation okay. with them. Let them be able to come home with you and tell you and say, Mom, um, I need to find out this, or I need to know. Mm -hmm. Be honest with them, be open right. with them, and yes. give them the information that is right. Stop yes. hiding because we grew up in an age where, me, mm -hmm. I grew up in an age where a lot of parents, things grandparents so was hiding stuff. Right, a lot of things They never used to, to you. tell you anything. You have right. to find out on your own. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> but not have a conversation about right. why it shouldn't happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So I started to encourage schools, mm -hmm. churches. Mm -hmm. I did it. Right. They want right. to give you this experience. Sure. <laughs> One time they asked me to test 25 pastors. Okay. And some of them were giving you these negative feedbacks. Mm -hmm. This negative this was coming from them. Right. And I'm asking God, please let one of them at least, one of them be positive when I test them. Let one of them, just to, you know, just sorry, just for the hell of it to, <laughs> to you know, because it, there was ignorant. HIV is in church. Mm -hmm. HIV is in schools. Mm -hmm. HIV is on the streets. Mm -hmm. HIV is everywhere. everywhere. And there is no face to it. There isn't a face. Right. Years ago, you could have said, oh, that person had AIDS. Right. We couldn't have so. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You cannot look at a person and say that person is HIV positive. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you tell I'm HIV positive without me telling you that? Mm -hmm. No. So HIV is everywhere. It could be your grandfather, your grandmother, your mm -hmm. auntie, your uncle, your cousin, your nene, your brother, your sister, everybody. everybody. Mm -hmm. It don't ask your age, your class, your race, the creed, where you come from. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have unprotected sex, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you will get HIV. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Years ago, they used to do blood transfusion where there wasn't testing blood, but since HIV come about, they have to test blood now before giving anybody any type of blood. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mothers could transfer it to their, their children, children through mm -hmm. the birth canal. Mm -hmm. But if the mother knows that she's HIV positive and she starts taking medication, it will prevent the kids from, from being getting it. positive. Mm -hmm. And when the mm -hmm. babies are born, they do test them. Right. And mm -hmm. they are negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some are having cesarean. Right. Pregnant, um, HIV mothers right now are having babies. Right. And the babies are negative. Right. Mm -hmm. But moving on from there, mm -hmm. yes, the pastors and them, they need to speak about, be it HIV, 
be it AIDS, be it cancer, be it whatever, mm -hmm. in church. Sickness is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not on the street and not in the church. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you're not talking, these open dialogues. these dialogues with, with, with the church members, then... then Nobody wants to come to you and say anything to you or, or, or look for look support, support from you mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're not hearing it. And if I must interject here, Karen, you know, yes, we are not preaching, go and have sex outside of marriage. No, I'm not. We're not preaching, no. being faithful to your no. spouse. It's mm -mm. not about that because at the end of the day, we still believe and uphold the beliefs of the Bible and the SDA beliefs. But at the end of the day, as Karen said, these are real issues. They are persons for whatever reason, whether they were unfaithful in a marriage or, as she said, before getting into you know a marriage, they got HIV, right? Or now, as she said, where you have a lot of children, a lot of teenagers who are sexually active. Yep. Okay? And they need to be educated. One, yes, I shouldn't be having sex. We agree. But they still need to be educated about what's out there so that will hinder them from saying, hey, I need to have sex. I need to try this out. It's a matter of giving information so that persons are aware and they can make better choices and that's yes. what this that's what we're here about providing that information and in addition to that there are persons who are infected there are persons who have various illnesses and they're they're looking for hope they're looking for somewhere someone to go to and as good christians we have to provide that support provide that haven so that they can know hey i'm not in this alone and i could go to this person get that support because that person is pointing me to jesus who will be my forever friend. And that's what this is about. So go ahead, Karen. Yes. Well, my life. I um, started to take medication. Right. I stayed like four years without medication. medication because okay. as Dr. Conrad used to say, it's not broken, don't fix it. Meaning that my T cells, which is what the virus destroys, yes. was perfect like a normal person who doesn't have the okay, virus. Right. So why interfere with it? Right, right. But then these new strains started to come oh, in poor. and the doctor said, I need to right. start because we don't want any right. situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I started to take the medication one pill every night. I was so thankful with the one pill. Right. Seeing people taking all these different right. pills. Yes. But yes. that one pill is a combination of three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I take my one pill every night, and knock on wood, thank God. The what people said about the nightmares or whatever you give the hallucination, right? Never experienced that. So God be praised. Yes. At I, that time, were you praying? Yes, I was. Yes, I was, but I didn't come back into the faith as yet. Right. Yes, I but was. But you still believed in God. Yeah. You still had the SDA belief inside of you. Yes. You had that foundation from Glam Morgan SDA Primary School. <laughs> Couldn't get away from it. You try, but you always come back. Right. So I started to take my medication and decide to live my life as best as I know mm. how. Right. So times used to be dark where, like, this is not where I want to be. And traveling in the bus one day, I saw a billboard mm -hmm. on a church saying Seventh Day Adventist, Ebenezer Seventh Day Adventist Church, and I decided to sit. In your face, bam! <laughs> it's time. It's time, Karen. It's time. It's time for you to go back to what you know. No, right. Right? I got rid of all my Baptist clothes. Right. So it was immediately this, 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 this billboard. Yeah, I kept. And then it was because like because I'm hey. traveling every day and it's right there. Right. Right, and I decided to go. Right. So they had a crusade. Nice. At a tent. And that's one thing about Seventh Day Adventists. We always have a crusade. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what persons know about Seventh Day Adventists. There that's is so always good. a crusade. There is always an evangelistic series. Something going about because. The word of God says we have to share the gospel to all the world. And yeah. then he will come. Um, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I decided to go to the crusades, attend the crusade until it's like, okay, I got to do this. Right. This is my turnaround. Right. 
I got baptized. Amen. What year was that, may I ask? Ah, uh, let me see. What is that, 20? 19? Okay. okay. Yeah, 2019, right, right before COVID. COVID. Okay. Right before COVID. <laughs> yeah, I decided to get baptized, and I did. Right. Any regrets? No. And right there and then, after baptism, I had to give my testimony. The pastor interviewed me right in, in front of the whole tent. Were you prepared? <laughs> Always. I'm not a shy person. Right. I'm very outspoken. Right. And I like to put my card on the table. Right. And yes. And give you the option of... Take it or leave take it. Take it or leave it. Right. I don't hide. Right. Yes, I'm HIV positive. Mm -hmm. I do not fool around with it and say, I'm hiding it and don't... No, this is right. me. Right. Right? I didn't tell the part. I got married. <laughs> I, yes, I got married being HIV positive. I got married. Right. I was involved with a um, group where we used to come to Tobago and do, and turn around to Tobago and do healthy in different villages. Right, yes, yes. So one night, this is what I used to do in New York with my, have a group, had a group. Right. We used to give out condoms. We're not telling people to have sex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are telling them to protect themselves because you know they're doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. So we go to these different parties and we give out condoms. And in the package has, Department of Health used to give you all these flavors we put different things in it mm -hmm. and give them nice like a package. Make it real neat and nice and mm -hmm. give it to them. Mm -hmm. This is one experience I'm gonna tell you about. My doctor I will call me, he said, Carrie, you gotta come to work today. I said, today is my day off. I'm not coming to work today. Mm -hmm. He said, you have to come. Take a taxi and come to work. There's somebody here who wants to speak to you. Mm -hmm. I took the taxi and I went to work. It was a girl. Mm -hmm. She said to me, um, you don't know me but you gave me a package one time mm -hmm. and I didn't use it. Right. Now I'm HIV positive. And she have a plan of killing herself. herself. That's why the doctor called me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that day, it was a Saturday. I spent the whole day with this girl. This is when you gave your life back to God or not as before? Before, before, before. got you. I spent the whole day with this girl mm -hmm. talking her out right. Right. of that situation. Right. Show her where I came from. Right. And how it could be. Right. Mm -hmm. She was very happy. Well, not, well, not happy, but thankful that somebody was listening to and her. Understood and understood and could yeah. relate. Mm -hmm. And there were so many things after that, so many people that I have, like, you know. Right. Because of your experience. Because you remember you said when you started, I walked into this room and this person, I'm living with this 25 years. I'm living. Yeah. With. So it was as though, hey, I'm now able to, to identify so, right. and share and be of support to someone. Mm -hmm. Because it's not an easy journey. Right. But anyway, coming back to being baptized, yes. yes. I turned my life around on this. Right. Because God has been good to me even before I decided to give my life back to him. Amen. Some situations he took me out of. Right. There is a God. Amen. 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 There is a God. Amen. Without him? You are nothing. We are nothing. We are nothing. I wouldn't have been here. Right. If I didn't have him in my life. Right. And on that note, share with us a hib that stands out to you or that would have helped you through your experience. <laughs> you can sing it with us. Oh, Lord. <laughs> or you can sing it for us, <laughs> rather. <laughs> or you can just share the words. It was just, this is just one of my favorite, favorite but I have so many. Mm -hmm. Just as I am without one plea, but as thy blood was shed for me, but as, as thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. Sorry for mixing up the words. That's quite okay. The viewers at home would have been singing with you either way because 
they understand, and even if they can't understand, they are hearing your experience. Just as I am without one plea. Yes, and as you said, you came back and you were like, God has been good to me even before yes. coming back. Oh, yes. God brought me through a lot of situations. Oh, yes. sure and it's only because of him and him only mm. that you are here today. Yes. And you were sharing with us, you, were, you got married. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, second, I marriage, did. Second, second marriage. Second marriage, yes. Right. And how that happens that I was in Boku, Sunday school, that's before I got baptized. Mm -hmm. In Sunday school, doing my thing, giving out mm -hmm. my condoms as usual. And this guy came up to me like, he likes me or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. I said, you don't know me. Right. I said, the reason why I'm doing this, mm -hmm. there's a reason why I'm right. doing what right. I'm doing. Right. I explained to him and I said to him right there and then I said, you, you, you telling a person who is HIV positive that you like, and he looked at me like, I said, yes, I am. I said, that's what's fool you guys. Right. I said, you look at the females mm -hmm. or you look mm -hmm. at the male mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. here and mm -hmm. you don't know. You don't know. What nobody is There's not a talk, there's, there's not a not, sign. Exactly. And you just want to jump into that person. Right. You don't know what you're getting into. Yes. So I put it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You take it or you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he took it. Right. We had a, a long distance relationship, relationship because I was going back and mm -hmm. back and forth. And then it went down to where we got married. Right. Were we sexually active? Yes, we was. <laughs> Condoms? Yes. Protection? Yes. Because I had to protect him, him. Mm -hmm. and protect myself. myself. Yes. yes. Because if he had HIV, his strain and my strain was two different strains coming together, it would be bad for me. Right. So I had to protect myself. Right. 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 So yes, protection, protection, protection was mm -hmm. being used. Right. To this day that I know of, he's HIV negative. If he have it, he didn't get it from me. <laughs> Trust me on that one. So are you all still married? No. Marriage. I divorced him because he was stupid. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> right. Anyway. <laughs> but when you gave your life to God, was he in the pity at that point in time or? Out of the pity. Okay. He was out of the pity. Right. Right. I don't, he was out of the pity. Right. Yeah. So how do you feel now that he, I am single, a lot has been happening with me, but I am once again a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Mm -hmm. Life is good. And it's showing on your face, right? <laughs> to viewers out there, when I met Karen, she was <laughs> smiling from ear to ear. So, such a bubbly personality. And as she says, life, life is, good. is good. So, when you have Christ in your life, life is not just life good, it's good. great. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. So, tell me now in terms of your Christian faith or you, your uh, renewed faith in Christ, how that is helping you as you continue, you know, along your path, as you continue to be of support to other persons? I try to stay active. Mm -hmm. I am um, an usher in my church. Okay. I just joined the AY team. Nice. As a, a volunteer. Leader? No. Okay. To do volunteer work outside. In the um, community. Yeah, community. Yes. Yes. But yes. I, that was right before I came down anyway, right. so I started. Right. But anyway, um, I jump in wherever I'm You're needed. needed. Typical Tobago cult here. <laughs> Typical Tobago cult here. We can go all over the world and we fit in. And I think that's the beauty about being a Seventh-day Adventist. You can live here, go to Europe, go to Africa, go to China, and you fit right in as a Seventh-day Adventist and you're active. And when I say typical Tobago cult here, being brought up in the Seventh-day Adventist church in Tobago, you are taught or placed in every department, every ministry. So wherever you go, you can function. And you, if they want a secretary today, they want an AY leader <laughs> tomorrow, they want a Carista this afternoon, you always answer the call. call. And you yeah. answer that call. I stay involved. I'm in the women's ministry. I'm in the women's book club. I um, media. I do right. the... the, the um, and yes, she's a big ASI <laughs> Media Tobago chapter fan to those who are viewing. I do um, the... the, the Migrants for Sabbath school right. lessons on, on, in church. 
Vespers on a Friday evening, I sing, yeah, I do. Right. Short notice sometimes, but you always fall Again, falling. it's a big old training. <laughs> <laughs> you always fall in, you always fall right. in. Some of my people just ask me, how do you just do it? It's like, right. you don't say no. Why say no? If you can do something, you do it. Right. And you do it because you want to do it. You do it because you love to do it. Right. And as you said, God has brought me through so much. I am devoted. Whatever you ask of me, I am going to do. I try my best. Right. So as we wrap up, because I know you have much more to share, <laughs> and hopefully when you return to Tobago another time, we can continue. Because I'm sure that her testimony is inspiring someone out there who is going for the first time. Maybe you got bad news this week. Might not be health news, but you got bad news this week and you felt like giving up. But Karen has reminded you Giving up is not an option. Giving up is not an option. There is hope in Jesus. Yes, so please is. share with us your favorite text or one Bible text that would have stood the test of time mm -hmm. for you. I can do all things through Christ. Oh yes. Shit. Oh yes. Oh yes. And I think that's a text that everyone knows. And even as you grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church, you are taught that from a very early age. And Karen shared where he, I had that SDA upbringing from small. Mm -hmm. I ventured here, there, and everywhere. But you always have to come back home. Come Cheers. back home. Yeah. And Jesus reminds us always, he, whenever you're ready to come back home, I am there with outstretched arms, waiting to receive you, waiting to show you, he, I never stopped loving you. I'm always there. And Karen shared as well, even as she went through her experiences, she felt God. She knew that yeah. God had a hold on her, and that mm -hmm. is what matters. God is always ever-present. So to everyone viewing, please remember that Jesus is our best friend. He will never leave us, even when you feel like giving up, even when you say, hey, it's the end of the road, I have my plan, what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. hey. God gave us life, and even when we go through difficult moments, he promises to hold our hands. Yes, so, does. until another time, no, I have let's. A message for the young people. Sorry, Karen has a <laughs> message for the young person. So, young persons, come closer. <laughs> Listen to this message. Yes, my youths, my young people out there. If you are in a relationship with a boy or girl, be it a male or female, and that person's asking you to have sex with them without a condom, Tell them no. Run away. Ask them to have to get tested. You all could go and get tested together, know each other's status. But do not jump into a relationship with anyone that you doesn't know what you're getting into. And don't let a five minutes of pleasure give you a lifetime of pain. Right. It ain't worth it. Right. Get tested and know your status, know each other's status. Mm. And stay away from sex. Yes, yes. If I had, if I had listened, I wouldn't, I don't know if I should say I wouldn't be here, <laughs> but anyway. The story would have been different. It might have been different. Right. Be careful with your life. Yes. Know your partner, know your partner's status. Because HIV, as I said, do not ask you how old you are, how young you are. Mm -hmm. It could happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't have to be a sex worker on the street, a prostitute mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. It could happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. love yourself, take care of yourself. And stay away. And stay away. <laughs> and don't be, a, to the females, don't be an elevator. Should I? Say it plainly. Don't be a. Don't <laughs> let a man be an use you as an elevator. elevator. Yes, and I think she said it all when she said that. Right. Yeah. So, take care of yourself. Love yourself. Respect yourself. Know your status. Know your partner's status. Yes, and as she said, here's what I had my experience. If I had to do it all over again. Sex would wait until marriage. Yes. 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 And God, wait. God said it in His Word. And sometimes you ask, 
God doesn't know what I'm going through from day to day, how I feel. Mm. But he said it in his word. But there are consequences to sin. There are consequences when we do things that God doesn't want. So let's go according to God's will. And let's be reminded that even when we stray, he is still there. So until another time, continue to have a blessed Sabbath. Amen. So family, you would have heard that experience. And there are many persons out there who have other types of experiences where they feel all alone. But we are never alone. God is right there holding us, shielding us, and reminding us, hey, I've got this. So go to him, call on him, and let him know, Lord, I need you. And he with outstretched arms, will continue to wrap you up, keep you safe and secure, and continue to direct your path so that you can be a testimony, you can be a living experience to someone who may feel that they are all alone. So until another time, happy Sabbath, everyone. <laughs>